Thanks, sound reminders. All right. So, I'm just saying right now, just want, before we get to the regular rundown, that I was going to highlight Sand Bullish as a trade setup, and it's playing out a little bit too rapidly here. And essentially, double bottom here, while a lot of other altcoins drop to lower lows, that shows me relative strength. The 12 hour time frame was a stair step bull move into a stair step bear move. We're gonna scout a 12 hour higher low. This is only for the most aggressive bulls looking for this bounce here because we are just going to anticipate a four hour lower high is the most likely result of this bounce. But essentially just a little short term shift is underway. The broader stock market is seeing that same short term shift right now, which we'll look at in just a second. So I just wanted to highlight that real quick because that was one of the things I was gonna be talking about here. All right. So, I hope you're well. It's 2 p.m. So the, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, on the daily time frame, we had a big red day yesterday and it was a pretty darn convincing day for the bears because all of our major sectors were dropping to the low of the day at the same time, and we were extremely weak. So now what we're looking at, there's only two things that can happen. A weekly lower high bear flag confirming into fresh fear lows, or a daily trend change to bulls to keep this weekly bounce going. So after yesterday, the probability for a daily trend change to bulls decreased for me, but I'm still keeping that door open as a possibility. And the next two days this trading week are gonna be very key for me, keeping in mind that Monday is a holiday in the US, July 4th, so we don't have trading on Monday for stock market. But next two days are very key for me because if we can set, I mean, essentially we have, this has to be the higher low. Let's, let's just make it very simple. If that's the NASDAQ higher low, then it's possible we can create a daily trend change from here. If we see another lower low from here, the pullback will be significant enough where I will be scouting a daily lower high to be the result of the next bounce. It's still possible if we bounce from here to set a daily lower high as well. But essentially, I'm, I'm leaning bearish after yesterday and, and into yesterday, but I'm creating a path forward to say, you know, I'm, I'm open to the possibility that this could shape up as well. So the next two days are very key. Right now, we just had an inverse head and shoulders on the 15 minute time frame confirm for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So I was watching SPY here and it was a 15 minute inverse head and shoulders shifting short term momentum for the day. But we have to break the high of the day now because if we don't, it's just an hourly lower high. So still a lot of proving for the bulls here. This is just a little short term relief so I'm watching for a daily higher low to try and form. The burden of proof is on the bulls. So again, that, that little shift that the NASDAQ just saw, which happened over the last 17 minutes, that is what kicked sand bulls into gear over the last 17 minutes. So now the question is how much follow through do we get? All right, the dollar is still very strong. As we know, crypto bulls and market bulls want to see the dollar weak. This is a tally in the bear column for crypto and stock market bears, as long as we keep support and we keep holding strong. It's a potential weekly bull flag at this point. So keeping an eye on that, if I'm going to gain any confidence as a crypto or stock bull, I need to see a break of this support of 103.67. If that support is not breaking, this will be a tally in the bear column. The US 10 year is pulling back today. It's gonna to be pretty key to be seeing if we change the daily trend for the bulls and set a weekly higher low or not. And again, same thing, if I am bullish stocks and crypto, I wanna see the 10 year weak. One more clue that I watch for is the VIX. Look at this weekly equilibrium with the VIX. This measures Volatility, oftentimes it's inverse to the broader market. 
If I am a crypto or a stock bull, I want this to break bearish. We're seeing some nice follow through from the S&P 500 bulls who are now looking up at the high of the day. Sand trying to follow as well. So again, those are the three things that I look as a part of my analysis as to whether I'm bullish or bearish the broader market. The dollar, the 10-year yield, and the, the VIX. So Bitcoin, are we responding to the broader market strength? A little bit, but not significantly at all. We're still very range-bound on Bitcoin. This is the 30-minute time frame. And we've actually been within this 30-minute equilibrium for... How many hours? Seven hours. So we've got the low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low. Anything under $20,158 is another lower high remaining within this tightening range. But as we can see, a lot of altcoins are breaking bull first. They've been leading the way down. They're leading the way up. Just more volatility in general. So if Bitcoin can break this tightening range bull, we zoom out and we scout a four hour lower high. We can see right now we've got a stair step drop over the last eight candles. Look how tight we're getting. Multiple four hour inside bars. A break is imminent of this tightening range. The stock market bulls are having my probability needle shift that we will likely break bull on Bitcoin here. Again, keeping in mind, we're just gonna be looking for a four hour lower high. We can measure our retracement size to gauge what is the most likely scenario from there. We're either going to form a bear flag and remain really weak. And again, oftentimes these FIBS retracements, these FIB retracements line up with EMA 12. Look at the red EMA 12. It's right at a 40% retracement. Over the next couple of candles, it'll drop down to 38, 36% retracement. But I can just keep it simple and say, if four hour EMA 12 is resistance, it's a potential four hour bear flag. If we get over four hour EMA 12 resistance, the probability of a bear flag is much less likely. I'm having some FOMO right now because I was watching this biotech sector holding on real well to the broader market. I posted the trade setup that I was gonna take if it was gonna come to me. S&P 500 did exactly what I wanted it to, but here I am with you all having a wonderful time instead. All right, so Bitcoin watching this tightening range and we'll see how it breaks. But again, some altcoins are not waiting for Bitcoin to break. They are already getting the break. And if I'm a sand bull that is in that play for that hourly trend change and four hour bounce now underway. So again, we can see sand already broke the four hour stair step pattern, which Bitcoin is not. But I know that I'm going to be cautious on sand until Bitcoin breaks bull as well. If Bitcoin breaks its four hour inside bars bullish, that will add to my confidence in a sand long. And if it fails, that would be a big red flag for me. Other coins, Ethereum. A lot of coins are in a daily higher low pattern right now still. So we can say two things. Number one, the pullback we saw over the last four days is ugly. The bulls are not comfortable at all. The bears are confident. It's more than the bulls wanted to see. And... It also, on many names, created space for a daily lower high to be the result of the next bounce. So for example, Bitcoin right now, or even Ethereum, Ethereum can bounce 10% and set a daily lower high still. So we're creating that space. Look at Ripple, XRP, look at all that space for the daily lower high. There's a bunch of names that have that possibility for a daily lower high to be the result of the next bounce. A patient bear is waiting for the daily bounces to be looking bearish. So again, you need to determine what direction you're looking, and whether you want to be aggressive or conservative. An aggressive bear is going to be scouting four-hour lower high entries on these altcoin bounces right now. A patient bear is going to wait for a daily lower high to be looking for their entry. An aggressive bull is already in. A patient bull is waiting for proof on different time frames, longer-term time frames. So I right now, I'm bullish. Listen, listen, this is why people get confused with technical analysis. I'm bullish on the hourly chart for sand. I'm bearish on the four hour. I'm bearish on the 12 hour in the daily. So I'm expecting a short term bounce. We're going to gauge how much follow through we get. 
as to whether or not the bulls were able to set up a four hour trend change, but then we're just scouting a 12 hour lower high. So you can be bullish on one time frame and bearish on the other. And that's why it's important to communicate as much as possible because I can say I'm bullish and if I don't specify what time frame, that leaves out a whole bunch of information. So Ethereum's got its four hour bounce, trying to shape up as well along with these other altcoins. It is weaker still. We don't, we're in a 15 minute downtrend. A lot of work is still needed from Ethereum if we're going to break the four hour lower highs and get the four hour bounce going. So there are better choices out there for the bulls. There are, there are names that are relatively stronger and a BTC pairing show us that. So look at ETH BTC on the 15 minute. Look at SAND BTC on the 15 minute. What's the difference? One is much stronger than the other. One and then the other. Relative strength versus relative weakness. And that's what helped the BTC pairing helps us identify when we're looking at altcoins and the BTC pairing, who is stronger and who is weaker. And ETH BTC has to confirm the 15 minute trend change to get a four hour bounce going. And then we scout a four hour lower high. So SAN's gonna be scouting a 12 hour lower high. There's a bunch of names that have clarity for me on the 12 hour and the daily. So Soul, look at the daily, potential head and shoulders here. If we get a couple bounce, couple day bounce going, Soul's a potential head and shoulders. And there's a few of those out there. FTT, we just broke support, but a lot of space for a daily lower high. Adam's got space for a daily lower high. Again, all these coins, Adam just hit $7. We can bounce 20% and set a daily lower high. So the size of the retracement on this consolidation has created the space for potential daily lower highs to be the result of the next bounce. Man, Link's got a brick wall at 750 resistance. Binance. So trying to shape up the four hour bounce. So again, I like four hour, I like short term bounces shaping up, but just looking for four hour lower highs. I'm just, I'm just scrolling through my list right now to see how these bounces are shaping up because things have shifted the last 30 minutes. So I know on my screen, you might be getting a little whiplash here. LTC is a potential head and shoulders. So again, trying to shape up a daily bounce candle, but LTC can see a bounce of 10% and still just set the daily lower high. So four hour bounces underway. Again, GMT, relative strength. GMT hit its low of the day at 7 a.m. If you look at a bunch of other altcoins, they hit multiple other lows of the day over the last five hours. The names that did not are bouncing more significantly. Relative strength. And if I'm a bear, I want to be looking at the names that have relative weakness. So if I'm scouting a four hour lower high, I want to look at the names that are showing me weakness and drop to clear lower lows and have tons of space for four hour lower highs and tons of space for daily lower highs. So essentially bears are determining for themselves, am I scouting a four hour lower high or a daily lower high? It's pretty much the setups from here. And bulls, probably already want to be in positions if they're going to attempt these bounces. Bitcoin still battling hourly EMA 12, which has been resistance for the last 24 hours plus. For relative strength and weakness for alt BTC, should the weaker ETH relative to BCC, BTC mean that it has more room to run, not in a bear market? Again, the names that are weaker, I would be choosing 
to be scouting for the bearish entries and the names that are stronger, I would be choosing for the bounce plays. If we're in a bull market, the answer is different. If we're in a bull market, you can look for those names that are weaker to be laggards and catch up. But in a bear market, we don't have the kind of confidence that those laggards are going to play catch up. It's still possible they do, but in terms of determining the higher probability, we don't have that confidence. Doge has relative strength. That's the biggest four hour bounce out of anybody. Creating the space for a four hour trend change attempt once we top out. Doge's, Doge daily consolidation is one of the healthier pullbacks out there. I bet Doge BTC is doing well. Eight BTC definitely still has relative strength. Have to lose the daily higher lows for eight BTC to set a weekly lower high. And that's when it will be the time for the eight bears to have their run. We did break bearish from a channel I was watching. So I'd keep an eye on that rising wedge. And if I'm a bear, I wanna see a 12 hour lower high reject from that level and shape up a head and shoulders. Might not bounce all the way up to it. As we know, a lot's gonna be dictated by the broader market. So if SPY bulls are able to set a daily higher low, do we break resistance and see follow through? Or do we fail resistance and then shape up that weekly lower high more convincingly? I didn't exit enough of my short positions. So yeah, the daily charts on names that look good. Doge daily chart looks a lot better than most names. SHIB, I would be scouting a lower high because of the size of the pullback we saw. Ape is definitely one of the stronger names. And you can look at the percentage size of the pullback and what percentage bull move would be needed for a daily higher high. And some names are very different compared to others. So just as an example, ape for the higher high needs 18%. Well, the other thing, the other factor when you're comparing, ape is a lot more thinly traded, meaning in terms of dollar volume, you don't need nearly as much for a very significant move. For example, on Coinbase, it's average. Well, let's go to Binance so we're consistent. But Binance, average volume, you're looking at 100 million, that's a significant amount. It's definitely been growing over the last couple of weeks. So 100 million there, Binance average volume, 220 million. Biotech sector trying to form a daily bull flag. That's why I was looking for that entry. Might get another chance for an hourly high or low. I'll be interested in the hourly consolidation. When do I exit my swing crypto positions? If they're bullish and I'm playing counter the trend, I scale out into strength for a, the majority of the position. And then I set stop losses for when momentum is lost. So for example, with my Ethereum trade, I was scaling out on the way up, exited some in the 1130s initially on the way up, or was it the 1230s? I forget. 
Yeah, I entered there. So I exited some in the 1230s. And then when the four hour support was lost at 11.94, I stopped out of more position. So essentially the, 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 the good video for that on our YouTube channel is, it, I talk about breaking up orders into three positions, breaking up trades into three positions Bear with me here. Forget the title. I'm gonna have to post it in the description of this video. But I talk about the analogy of breaking up the trade into three different orders. And it's essentially, I sell the first third of the position as a protector, meaning when the trade starts to initially go in my way, if I then sell a third and I lower my cost basis, I'm now in full control of that trade. I sell my second third at my target. So if my target were a 20% bounce, I sell my second third there. And then I sell my last third when bears prove something to me. And that would be losing support. So if we lose you know, a 12 hour uptrend, then I sell the last one third. All right, so keep an eye on the broader market as always. We have to see the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ confirm hourly uptrends if any daily bounces are going to get any follow through. And right now we are still under the high of the day. And positions that I've exited, I'm now pretty much flat as far as stocks and crypto are concerned. And so I'm going to just be patiently waiting for more clarity and confidence before I start deploying capital again. So that is my game plan in the short term. It's always nice to be flat and wait for confidence. And so that's what I'm doing. Probably not gonna swing anything significant into tomorrow. And then tomorrow we will get the question answered. Are we forming daily higher lows in the S&P 500 or not? And again, bulls have to. They have to set that daily higher low now because if we break the low of today from here, that then creates the space for a daily lower high to be a very a more likely scenario next time we do bounce. Still having I do still have a partial ETH position and yes it is very small. And again when you when you scale out into strength your break even drops to so low on the trade and the only thing you know I'm just giving back some profit at this point. So let's just say, for example, again, the trade that I entered, I entered it first scaling 1200, second scaling 960, third scaling 885. Those are rough numbers, but roughly what it was. And so that gave me a break even somewhere in the mid tens. And then I'm scaling out some in the 11s, some in the 12s. And so that drops my break even on what I have left pretty much under the low of where we hit our fear bottom. So I can't lose on the trade. It's just a question of, how much profit am I going to give back before I am completely back to cash? And, or do we see another leg up that I then can see a bit more profit? So I have, again, it's a, a very small position at this point. I think it's 25% of what my full trade was at the bottom. And that's after multiple flips because I sold out on the initial move up. I rebought two thirds of it on the 12 hour consolidation for Ethereum and then I sold out most of that. So I sold everything on the initial bounce because of how significant and fast it was, re-entered two thirds of it, scaled out a bit more, exited a bit more when support broke. So I have some exposure and I will keep some exposure until this weekly chart bounces. Even if we drop down to lower lows, I'm just gonna be scaling back in again. We are in a stair step pattern with a lower high every single week for 13 in a row. And it's only because I love bounce plays. A lot of traders, you know, look at the bounce that we just saw and say, that's not enough to convince me to go bullish. And that's perfectly fine. 
But as we know from any altcoins, that was a 20 to 50% bounce. And that is tons of opportunity for me as a bounce trader with one of my edges. So I will absolutely continue playing bounces very cautiously, but until the weekly chart bounces to touch EMA 12, I will be having some kind of bullish exposure. My aggressiveness playing bounces matches the bears. So I'm not gonna be aggressive because bears aren't aggressive right now. If we flush under 700, down to 600, 500, I start getting aggressive and scaling in more aggressively. And again, that's just my style and what works for me. And I certainly would not suggest it for newer traders. Thank you. Yes, that is the video. Should you scale in? Yeah. Should you scale in and out of trades? Talks about how I break up positions. What coins do I hold in my no-touch crypto position? It's pretty much just Bitcoin and Ethereum. There's a small amount of Litecoin, a small amount of Link, but insignificant. I've been short in the energy sector. I'm more interested in the energy sector than oil, but... Energy gave us a really nice quadruple top. Look at this resistance. Been playing against this the last two days. 7691, 7696, 7690, 7699. I mean, you can't have a more clear resistance level than that. Daily EMA 12 aligning with it. Daily lower high, the most likely scenario aligning with it. I sometimes place bids rather than market order. I much prefer market orders. When I make a trade decision, I make it now. I wanna be in now, I wanna be out now. If, however, like I entered my, my Ethereum fill that was at the bottom for 885 was a bid while I was away. And I was, I had to, I forget what I had to do, but I knew I'm about to be gone from the computer for three hours. If we hit this level over the next three hours, we will be in some very extreme RSI levels on the hourly and the four hour time frame, and I will be very comfortable making those entries. That's when I'll place a bid. I won't place a bid if I'm gonna be sleeping for 10 hours. I don't sleep for 10 hours. If I'm gonna be sleeping for eight hours, that's too long, too much can change. Because if we had bounced for three hours to an hourly bear flag to cool off RSI and then hit 885, it would not have been the same trade setup. I would only have been comfortable with an 885 entry if it was a straight waterfall drop. And I know that if it's gonna get there in the next three hours, it would be a straight waterfall drop. That's when I will place bids versus market orders. So BTC up or down, it's going up and then down. Four hour bounce, four hour lower high. If I'm a bear swinging on the daily time frame, I don't care at all about a Bitcoin four hour bounce. It doesn't do anything to sway my position. What do I consider when deciding if I wanna make a swing trade? The probability of the setup working out, whether I want to be in a trade or want to be off the computer Those are the two biggest factors. Do I look at energy prices? Absolutely not. Price action is king. Did I change any settings on my EMA 12 and 26? No. And there is a video going over how 
I set up my charts, trying to find it real quick. Coming in hot, how I set up my charts. So that's in the chat. How do you know she is the one? There's no such thing as the one. There's 42,000, the ones. All right, I'm wrapping up. I appreciate you tuning in. Hit the like button, please. Let's get over 100. We've got Bitcoin tightening still on the hourly. 30 minute equilibrium short term guide. If I am in an altcoin bounce position that is already shaping up, SHIB is following Dodge. If I'm an altcoin position that's already shaping up a bit, like sand, like SHIB, like Dodge, have to ensure Bitcoin breaks that 30 minute equilibrium bull. If not, it's a red flag. And I will probably see you Friday. And we'll see if these bounces play out and how significant they are and whether or not we have four hour uptrends confirmed for daily bounces or a four hour lower high and lower low for continued full bear control. So I appreciate you tuning in. Nobody commented about my haircut. And do good things.